going on guys welcome back to wdydcsp again i'm feeling generous today yes i am overthinking so today guys i'm going right into testing and inspection of basic instruments part four yeah part four not three part four so stay tuned guys all right, guys, welcome back to part four of inspecting basic instruments. And yeah, I lose track. Part three, part four, part five, it really doesn't matter. We are inspecting and testing basic instruments. And in this series right here, um, I didn't feel like digging out any more instrumentation, but we're digging out scissors, guys. So what do we know about scissors? Well, aside from identifying the vast majority of scissors that we use, in um, our practice of sterile processing and surgery. Um, the components to scissors are basic, basically the same. Same as a forcep, except it doesn't have a ratcheting part. Um, now certain scissors are um, considered locking, but those are special scissors known as Castro Viejos or Jacobson um, scissors that have the locking spring mechanism. But this is a basic scissor. Um, what do you have? You have the jaw, you have the box lock area, you have the shanks, and you have the rings. Uh, if you notice, there are no ratchets to lock this scissor in place, so this scissor should be free flowing. This is actually a um, five and a half inch medicine bomb. Um, I tell a lot of people that when you're dealing with instruments, measure the length of your hands. Um, I know my hand is seven and three quarters, seven and a half, seven, three quarters from base of palm to tip of middle finger. So when I'm basically sizing up instruments to allow me to know sizes of instruments very quickly is I basically use my palm on my hands. I use my hands as a measuring guide. So this is a um, five and a half, five and three quarter inch medicine bomb scissor. It is a curved medicine bomb. Um, what are the inspection points? Of course, you're always inspecting instrumentation for bio burden and debris. So the working the working um, area of the scissor is the jaw, okay? So all along the jaw, you wanna make sure that there's no bio burden, there's no nicks or cracks, um, any bending of the teeth. Um, when you're actually closing the scissors, you wanna make sure that the points actually meet or um, overlap actually, all right? Um, for the box lock, you wanna open up to make sure that there's no debris, bio burden, divots, pitting, rusting, or any little hitting nooks and crannies in there. The difference between scissors and forceps is that the way these are placed together or they are um, manufactured is that they're held together with a screw. You guys can see that screw right there. So what is so important about this screw? Well, that screw can harbor bio burden, okay? This is a um, Phillips style screw with a little slit in it. So you wanna inspect that area in there. You might wanna get some lighted magnification in that area to make sure that there's no bio burden or blood, anything um, hiding in there. You also wanna make sure that that screw is not backing out. So a backing out screw is a bad screw. Do not try to fix that screw. If it's backing out, it must be sent out for repair to properly seat that screw and um, make sure that it does not back out. So you're inspecting that the screw doesn't back out and you're inspecting the opposite side to make sure that the screw is seated all the way to the very end and there's no gap in there, okay? So it should be nice and flush. Now, being that there is a screw point on here, you wanna check that box lock for any cracking in the area of the screw. So the area way, so it, any force given to this blade can cause cracking on the weaker ends um, of the blade. This is the weakest part of the blade because it is has the less metal mass because that screw is there. That screw was taken out, of course, there is a hollow hole in there. So giving you less metal mass, causing any cracks in both sides. So you wanna inspect for that. Okay, you wanna go along the shanks to make sure that there's no bending um, and no um, bowing of the shank area. Um, this is a medicine bomb scissor, um, not to be confused with any other scissor. Um, some scissors aren't flush the way that is flush right there in the center there. Um, so the inside, the two blades and the two sides should come together nice and flush. Um, going down to the ring, 
The ring should be nice and um, smooth. Shouldn't be no cracks or damages on there. Of course, no bio burden because bloody bloods, gl gl bloody gloves and hands touch the instrumentation. All right. So you want to make sure that this scissor is running smoothly. So what are one of the tests that you should do um, on scissors? So scissors shouldn't be very stiff, but they shouldn't be very loosey goosey either. So one of the tests that you should be doing is the... Um, I guess the friction test. So you want to raise your scissor open and you want to drop the one end and make sure that this scissor isn't either staying in the air or shutting completely. Um, so if it shuts completely when you drop it, okay, that is too loose of a scissor and it can have some functionality problems. So you want to make sure you got that nice little gap um, so it can close to about that much, but that is a good scissor. Um, as you manipulate it open and close, you almost hear the cutting action. Yes, this is a gold handle scissor, which indicates that there is a carbine, tung a tungsten carbine insert in there. You cannot see it, but it gives this scissor a superior cut um, compared to a um, regular silver handle scissor. And you want to test this scissor with the proper testing material and these are the proper testing materials. So the ones that I have here is the orange color and the peach color. Um, these are the latex free versions of the red and yellow. So the yellow is for scissors that are four and a half inches in length or shorter. And the orange is for scissors that are four and a half inches and longer in length. Now, I've had many people ask me, okay, so scissors that are you know, longer than four and a half inches, but have a tiny um, jaw blade, should we be testing it on the same material? And my answer to that is no. Okay, those are delicate tuck cutting scissors, and those scissors should be tested with laparoscopic testing instrument uh, material, which is tissue. Um, the delicacy of that is not equivalent to the um, tissue that this replicates or the toughness of the tissue that this uh, replicates. So if it has a very small jaw, um, it is used for basic, it is used for um, very delicate tissue, um, mainly uh, around the brain, like the dormata, um, uh, and areas of that, er of, of, of that delicacy, tissue of that delicacy. So a tissue um, should be used to test those instruments. So what are we testing? Right, when we test a scissor, okay, first of all, you wanna find a nice unsheathed edge because you don't wanna start shaving off material on the field, right? You're not testing the full length of the jaw here. So you're not opening this instrument up and you're cutting as such. That is not the way these scissors are used on the field. These scissors are used, one third of the blade is used on the field for cutting, okay? Up to about a half. Okay, the working area of the actual scissor is the front third of the scissor, um, maybe a little bit longer, and they're used for very minute, very precise cuts and then dissections. So one of the things that I've asked vendors before is that with the different color handle scissors, should there be different testing material? And the answer was no, there isn't any different testing material but the way you should test the instrumentation is that instead of placing your fingers in the rings and both rings to cause that um, lateral friction is instead thumb the instrument and palm it when you're testing so you see that I have no ring no fingers in the ring of the instrument but I'm gonna go ahead and test the first third of my testing material so you want to go ahead grab the first third you want to cut and then pull to make sure that it doesn't snag. You're gonna open up the scissor, do it again, cut, and then pull. And it should be nice, smooth cuts with no snagging. That is a nice, sharp scissor without you thumbing the other ring and causing uh, lateral friction on it um, to give it a better cutting quality. But if you're palming it and cutting and letting just a gravity of the scissor cut through the testing material lets you know if you have a nice sharp scissor all right guys as always stay true to yourselves keep it 100 peace and i hope this video helped you out